Just your friendly neighborhood Walmart van lifer reminding you that as awesome as van life is Sometimes you're just sitting in a Walmart parking lot working from inside of a dark van because you don't want people being able to look in at you in your van. Hey kid, get in my van and I'll give you some candy. That's just how it be sometimes. Hi, I'm Jeremiah and this is my life. Also, I, I'm having problems with my USB port, which is where I charge everything, my laptop while I'm driving, my drone batteries, my GoPro battery, everything, because inside I found the issue. None of my work was actually the problem. The USB cord that came with the USB disconnected. Two metal pieces that looked like they were glued together or something, they came undone. It's in a very hard reach to place, hard reach to place, hard to reach place and I'm not sure if I can do it, one, because my hands are not small enough to fit all the way in there. Vance, take a look at this. Can you believe that? But then also, I don't know if electrical taping the two pieces together would be sufficient to maintain enough contact to allow electricity to flow, which means I may have to take the whole thing out and replace it, which I don't have any tools with me. I'm not anywhere near any family or anything. Anyway, it's just really frustrating when I understand when something I do breaks, but when something that I paid somebody else to do the right way, as in I bought this product for someone and it breaks, that's really frustrating. So that's why we have cords running across the van right now to use our AC power instead of our DC power. Such is van life. I forgot that I had an entire dirty load of laundry to do, so that's where we are now. Some random coin dispense laundry place near me. Washing a full load, waiting for the first one to go through, then we'll stick it in the dryer, and then we'll go find our place to sleep on the coast, where hopefully we don't get a ticket. Time to go switch the laundry. I ended up having to find a different place to park than what I intended. I was trying to find a little pullout because I've slept on the pullouts on the coast before, but apparently closer to the city they all have no parking signs. So, I happened to, as I was driving by, the place I wanted to go surfing the next morning, Pacifica, there's a little parking lot next to it where the grocery store is and the surf shop is and the burger place is and the expensive coffee place are. And I saw a van and an RV parked in that parking lot. And so I thought, okay, if they're doing that, then odds are this is like a little secret spot that is right in the middle of everything, but you can park at. So I came here, been sleeping here, woke up this morning feeling that sense of dread around getting in the water and surfing one because it's cold it's not sunny so how am i gonna dry my suit you know it's i'm still really new to surfing so it's embarrassing and blah blah all the things that i tell myself before i want to go do something like skiing or surfing or hiking whatever it might be i have this sense of like anxiety around it, this dread of doing it, even though I know I wanna do it. So it took me a while to wake up, to get dressed, to go put on my suit, and then to get out into the water. But we finally did it, spent some time out in the freezing cold water. I'm freaking freezing in here. And I'm really glad I did finally get out. I am glad every single time I go and do the thing that I'm dreading, and I know I will be while I'm dreading it, I know I'll be glad that I go do the thing but I have this apprehension around actually taking action and doing the thing, and I don't know why. I do know, however, that it builds up and it gets stronger and stronger the more I feed it, the more I give into it. That's part of the reason why I built and moved into this van was 
I was in a place in life where I was really comfortable with not getting out of my comfort zone, with not doing anything outside of what was directly in front of me and what was directly possible and accessible and achievable without failure. I knew that I could live the rest of my life that way. And it's not a bad thing, it's just not how I wanted to live life. And I knew that if I built this van, in building it, every day would be a forcing myself to confront something that's terrifying, which is building something when I have zero experience. But then also I knew that once I was in the van, I would have to, every single day, make decisions that would push me out of my comfort zone and push me in ways that being safe with a job and an apartment and you know, a significant other, everything being consistent, would not push me. In a van, you have to decide where you're gonna sleep, decide where you're gonna go to the bathroom, decide what you're gonna cook, how much energy you have in your batteries to be able to cook, where you're going to park temporarily to work, where you're gonna park to sleep overnight, where you're going to refill your water, where you're gonna dump your gray water, where you're gonna wash your clothes. All of these different decisions that you don't really have to worry about when you live in a regular house, a regular life, I have to make every single day, which are forcing me to confront that apprehension towards taking action, which I know is good for me and I know I want in life, and it is no less difficult knowing that I wanna confront that. So this morning I had to confront that in order to get in the water, and I'm so glad I did. It's only two months or so into living out of this van, and I still feel definitely like I struggle a lot with the with the apprehension and the anxiety around regular life things. Maybe that's just me, maybe other people don't feel that, but I don't think so. I think other people feel it too, they just don't confront it or they don't know how to describe it. But it's only been two months and I am really looking forward to the next couple of months, understanding even more who I am, what I respond to, and how I can get over and work through some of the impediments and the roadblocks or the blockades that I have in my life that prevent me from doing the things that I know I care about like getting out and surfing a little, where nobody cares that you're new to surfing, nobody cares that you're struggling, and you'll figure out a way to dry your wetsuit and dry your surfboard, and yeah, you might get some sand and some dirt in the van, but what is the point of living if everything is clean and cut and dry and perfect, and arriving at the end of a life, and looking back and thinking, I wish I had taken a couple more risks, I wish I had gotten a little bit more dirty, I wish I had fallen a few more times for the sake of all the things that you do and see and enjoy and struggle through when you do take those risks. A little bit of reflection from Navlifer in his van. So now we are cooking some remaining pasta from the night before. I can hear it crackling. It smells like it might have burned a little. I need to turn it and uh, we'll keep working in the van, watching the rain fall slowly on the top of the van and then uh, see what comes next.